Welcome back to the Roundtable Live, you guys. Uh, first Thursday of the month at 8.30, we go live and we either bring guests in or we discuss topics that we've been hearing from our business alumni and our business community. And so this month for August, we've been we've been hearing this. We hear it throughout our programs. We hear it in Business Reinvention. We hear it in Startup Bootcamp. But sometimes our businesses just feel like they are stuck. Like, why isn't this working? I don't know what else I'm going to do. Um, maybe they start, like, our whole thing is love your work, fall in love with your business, feel passionate about it. That's when we do our best. And maybe these are those moments where, like, I don't even, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know if I love this anymore. I just, my back is against the wall. So this Roundtable Live is when your back is against the wall. And our hope with these conversations is to challenge and to inspire and walk away with maybe some new ideas or or maybe feel motivated to try something new to brainstorm for yourself and get excited about your business again. So in our live, you have the opportunity where you can comment, you can ask questions. We love hearing from you. It helps direct our conversations. Um, but yeah, throw your comments and questions in. Give us the thumbs up. Let us know if you want us to dive deeper into something. We can certainly do that. And then as usual, these will be available on our YouTube channel. It's YouTube at Red Star Marketing on Academy. So you can watch all of our roundtable lives there as well. Awesome. Great right. introduction. So I think, and you, you said your back's against a wall and that's a difficult place to be. And that's a pretty dramatic way to say it, but I, I think it's very uh, appropriate for how we sense people are feeling and what we mean by back against the wall there's there's variations of it but in some cases it really means um i have a week left or <laughs> um it's i'm going to give myself another month and if it's not working i'm done mm -hmm. we just hear that a lot and part of it is because we create a space where people feel like they can be vulnerable and honest um and that's where their head is at. It it may be an overstatement of what they're actually going to do, but that's how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to talk about today um, is how to, what to do in those moments, you know, how to mentally kind of work through that moment to find the opportunity in it. Ultimately, you know, the lane we're in is creativity. And that's the lane we're in every aspect of the work we do in our agency, but also in these programs. And so the ultimate goal of walking you through this is to get you to a place where creativity becomes a powerful tool. And you're the right people to do that because if you weren't creative, you wouldn't have started a business in the first place. Right. So it's in there. We have no doubt it's in there. So we want to figure out how to tap back into it but we need to change the landscape. Um, and also wanna say, I was a little hesitant to talk about this in just this way because in no way am I an expert. Like I'm not an accountant, I, didn't, I don't have an MBA, I don't, I'm not qualified to make statements about certain specifics of this and I wanna make sure everyone knows that I don't, I don't think I am and I'm not trying to be that. But what we are good at is trying to have the right conversations. We know how some of these things, you know, turn and twist and we've done enough of it with our clients and our businesses that we, we, we have some inside um, understanding of how things can turn out and how things can change. So what we wanna do is bring that to this story and maybe give some examples and things like that. So if you are someone who owns a business and you're in that moment where you think, you know, this is it. It's been hard before. I've had trouble before, mm -hmm. but this is different. And have you, what, what indicates that when you're talking to some of these businesses? How, how do you kind of gauge that? Like, how do I hear it? Yeah. Um, I think recently what I've heard is like, I just, I don't think I can do this anymore. I, I could just go get a job somewhere and it'd be so much easier. Or um, this is this is this is harder than anything I've ever done, and I don't know if I even like it anymore. I don't know if I like it. Mm -hmm. Or um, you know, I think in the in the description of this, you had said creativity. This is a time where creativity can be your lifeline. Mm -hmm. And 
a business that we recently talked to, you know, it, it's it's that moment where you're like, what the heck am I doing? I put so much of myself into this, but do I want to anymore? Yeah. I just don't know. They feel defeated. Yeah. Defeated is kind of like everything about them feels defeated. Yeah. Because they've tried and rightly they have. They've put everything on the line. All the all the perspectives of how to make a business work, they've they've looked at, they've tried things and it's just not working. Yeah, and you put and we get that too. You put a lot of yourself, you put a lot of your life dedicated into this business you know you, it's a lot of time it's a lot of mental energy it's a lot of emotion and it makes sense that it can feel you can feel defeated i mean it makes sense it's a big part of your life when you're a small business owner and yeah. when it's not going when it gets hard it can be really hard yeah and it can be really lonely which yeah. is why we're here which is why this community exists because these are the kind of moments that sort of the quote unquote outsiders can't understand. Right. Um, if you've never tried to run a business or start a business, it's a really difficult kind of pain to describe to people. Mm -hmm. So it's a very vulnerable thing. So anyway, we've seen this a lot and we've experienced it. I just want to stress this, like I've lived this a couple different times. So uh, it's not something I'm just speculating about. <laughs> so I've been, I've been there um, and it was a big wall and it was immovable, but so we want to talk about how I framed this up. I tried to create like a, a way to talk about this that could be sort of productive. And it occurred to me that first we have to define this place a little more clearly. And the way I, th I think there's three aspects of what this place looks like, feels like. Um, and I'll start by just talking about the obvious, which is you are, you have a financially unhealthy business. Right. You are losing money. You are, over um, borrowed, over upside down on your debt to cash flow ratio. You, you, your cash flow is like impossible. Um, your, you may have factors outside of your control. They shut down the road in front of your business. Price of butter is $10 now. I mean, there's so many reasons why the financial side of the business can get in trouble real quick. Right. And some of that you don't have control over. But one of the things that also happens in that mix is you start to tell yourself you're getting it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. Obviously, I'm doing it wrong. I'm losing money. And I just want to highlight that because that's a big assumption. And that can steer things the wrong way in your head real quick is you're doing it wrong. So we're going to talk about that. The second, so that's the first indicator. And I guess what I think can happen sometimes is that the Assessment of what's happening stops there. 90% of the focus and effort and discussions around what's that moment like stops at the financial side, which is sort of obvious and easy, it's sort of the low hanging fruit right. of this place you're in. Right. And I would say the second thing that I think Gina and I have become really dialed into as a red flag, and I believe in this place, this is what's happening in some form, People are mad at you. People are unhappy. Clients are unhappy. You're getting a lot of negative feedback. Uh, you're, you're mad. You're mad at your employees. You're mad at your customers. And they're mad back. I mean, not to overstate it, but you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We talk about this, you know, that time where as a business owner, you just get really frustrated with everybody. Yeah. yeah you're, you're mad at your customers. You're mad at your employees. And then we've also heard it the other way, your employees start getting frustrated with you. Yeah. And things like, they just don't get it, mm -hmm. start being said. And um, I, they're just not willing to work. Or um, it's, it starts to feel a little bit like a victim story in some ways. Um, and I think those are valid feelings and frustrations. Yeah. I guess what we're suggesting in this is that let's take a little closer look at that right because it's easy to just get mad and feel like it's not fair or it should be working but it's not it's not my fault it's so if you're mad at your customers or mad at your employees or they're mad at you we get it i've been there <laughs> i know how that feels um we've all we all know how that feels but it's hard to admit mm -hmm. 
And then the last one. This is like, <laughs> this is where we start to get broken hearted and worried about, <laughs> <laughs> worried about our people, which is why they probably end up at boot camp for free invention. Yeah. So are you dying a slow death? It's like, is this business killing your soul? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not to be dramatic, but we're entrepreneurs, right? We're all dramatic. Yeah. Like that's, that's yeah. What, our emotional uh, level is high and it's sort of like death by a thousand cuts, right? Because the realization that you are unhappy to your core does not happen right away. It happens over time <laughs> when you finally go, oh my God, wait a minute. This sucks. Yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? I hate it now. Yeah, um, and that's such a hard place to be. It's a hard place to Ugh. be. Yeah, and I and you guys have heard this story because you've been in our programs, but that's what we experienced with Red Star 10 years in, you know. I remember very clearly saying to Joy, you know, if this is what marketing is, I'm out. Like, I hate this. Um, so there's a choice that you have to make at that point. And, you know, just um, sacrificing for the sake of continuing a business that you hate is maybe what we want to challenge you right to think about yeah and that's the challenge like that's where we're, that's where we're coming in today is like this is the challenge this is the opportunity when you're at this place maybe you're not there right now maybe you've been there maybe it's coming but when you're at this place you know that's what that's what the round table is we want to inspire you we want to challenge you yeah so if anybody's felt that and want to throw it throw it in the comment and let us know i mean we've all felt that even in other parts of our lives i think sure yeah um, so how does marketing address that? And doesn't that sound just <laughs> completely superficial? Um, well, I think it can. I think you can put a marketing and I would, I would extend that into creativity and the realm of creative thinking and problem solving, which is marketing, by the way. I think that's a lens we can look through today and figure out w what we can do to think differently about what's going on in that moment. Yeah, because that's everything. Right. Yeah, we can't loan you more money. We can't come in and work your restaurant because you can't find people, but we can do this for you. Yes. Can, and this is important. Okay, so let's dive in. To, and I made a list of things that I've experienced and maybe I've recommended, but I've probably never thought of it in this order and together at one time, this process that I'm suggesting that they kind of walk through. So I'm gonna start at the top. So we've identified three things. You're financially unhealthy, your clients and employees are unhappy, one or the other or both, and you're dying a slow, slow death. <laughs> <laughs> we feel you. So I'm suggesting this. I think you start by looking at each of those three things and making a very detailed list about, okay, Let's dig into this. What is actually not working here? Let's be specific. Let's just not say, I can't find employees. That's too general. Let's dig into that. What kind of employees are you looking for? What, you know, let's figure out what's driving that problem. And what, is there more to that problem that we're not, that's not in the mix right now? And it requires you to really um, sit down and dig, I would say. So like even the question of what kind of employees have I hired? Ha I that's a good point. Yeah. Has that worked? Right. What kind of employee am I looking for? Where can that employee be? Does it have to fit? Like, I think we hear too is that sometimes people fit like have a mold. Like this is, I want this person right here. And so I think what you're saying is if that hasn't worked, let's look outside of that. Maybe there's another option, like make that list. Yeah, and why isn't it working? And mm -hmm. let's really dig in and, and by making those lists, I think what you'll see, the perspective you might have is, wow, I've learned a lot about this thing, this issue, this part of my business, this problem. Um, I'm in a difficult place, but I've learned a lot. And let's acknowledge what you've learned by having those problems. And that's what the list can do. That's what the list, that's the first step that the list gives you the foundational information you really need. Right. So an example I gave Gina before we started is when we did this process with, with Red Star and it was like, I'm out, I'm out, this sucks. 
<laughs> one, one of the, if I were to address that our clients were unhappy, our clients were very unhappy. And the list included, they don't trust us. And that's really painful to admit because how I want to phrase that is they just don't get it or they need to let me do my thing. Or, But the fact is they just don't trust us. Why they don't trust us is what I have to unwind. I got to figure that out. Why don't they trust us? They should trust us. But getting mad at them for not trusting us is not going to solve the problem. Well, and then like that's a, that's a big step because then if you're going to, dig deep like you said and really get to the the maybe the core of it and to be honest with yourself well there's a lot of unpacking that has to come mm-hmm. with that so yeah like you said why don't they trust us what have we been doing how have our processes worked at what point in this process is it not working i mean that's you got to dive in pretty deep to figure yeah. that out really deep and really the answer to that question really starts on the financial side in that particular case because the agency we were running a large, over 30% of our income was from markups and commissions. So we made money when you bought printed materials or when you placed an ad in the Star Tribune, we got a kickback. That's how agencies work. That's the financial model for an agency. That's why they didn't trust us because Mm. they thought we were motivated by getting them to do more ads so that we could make more money. Okay. That was something built into the industry and I just had to acknowledge it. Some instead of trying to continue to force it in my small town, because they, you know, that's how they do it in Minneapolis. So this, I just had to decide. You know what? That just doesn't work here. They don't trust us. Okay. Well, then we're going to have to change that, and we did. So we eliminated markups and commissions, which was eliminating thirty percent of your income, right now. So I, that's just an example, and you know, there's more to that story. But I think I want you to understand that I get it. It's like a real problem it has financial implications you know but unwinding it and really digging into it is where i think you need to start like to figure out what's really going on here Mm -hmm. so making those lists and i would suggest making the lists under the we're financially unhealthy the people are mad at me part and don't leave yourself out like make the list about yourself why are you so unhappy what, what do you hate about this? And get really specific. If you can't find 10 things, then you haven't dug hard enough. If you're really at that place. Yeah. And I think, you know, we have people, like, we've got a comment, like, yeah, I get it. I've been there. It's, you, I hear you. This is me right now. So, like you said, get the list out there. Write it down. What, what are you not liking? Yes. about what you're doing right now. What's making you unhappy? And be honest. Yeah, that's not always easy. Maybe you've changed your mind about something. <gasps> Maybe you didn't know what <sighs> it would feel like to own a restaurant or whatever. And and again, it goes back to, okay, I've got my list of what's not working and what have I learned? Well, if I've learned that I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the type of person should own a restaurant, whatever. And I learned that lesson. I was in a business that I was not cut out for and I learned that this is not my strength and I, this is not where I'm going to thrive. And that's a different story, but we're suggesting saying, dig in, find out what's not working, get messy, swim around in the problems. And then out of that, be honest and admit, what am I learning about myself? What am I learning about what my customers want? And what am I learning about how to financially run this business? All right. Now don't stop listening to the round table now. Be, now, now is when it's going to get good. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. So now we get to lay out. So, so that's, there we are. There we are. And I think why we're happy right now, <laughs> when we really should be offering you a Kleenex, is that <laughs> what I said to Gina was, well, this is when it can get good. Mm-hmm. I think we all have to recognize, you know, every um, gift comes wrapped in a problem. And this is where we, you probably have your own attention in a way you've never had before. And you can say, okay, I have got to change something. Yes. So let's do that. Okay, so the second thing that I think fits into this process is about storytelling. And I just, this is how I'm wired. I believe this to my core, and I think it's something that our businesses struggle with. And I would include every business I've ever worked for in that. Partly because um, it's a difficult thing to address from inside the problem, from inside the storm. 
And the second point is to control your narrative, to understand what narrative you have currently crafted about where you're at, what narrative your customers and employees have about where you're at, your bankers, everyone. What is the narrative? And what I'm suggesting is that if you have not provided anyone a narrative about what's happening right now, they've created their own. That's human beings just do that. And there's nothing that should not make you mad, but it does make people mad. And of course. Well, it can be frustrating. It can be super frustrating. Yeah, of course. When they're, like you said, when other people are out there, the community's talking or storytelling, and it's not your story. Yeah. It's frustrating. It's a misunderstanding of your story. Right. It's a, the wrong um, the wrong focus. And I'm saying, okay, well, let, and the second step of this, let's rewrite the narrative. Yeah. But you can't rewrite the narrative if you can't acknowledge what's not working and what you learned from that. Because the what you learned from that is how you're going to build get build back into your narrative the possibilities for what can happen next. Also, by including what you've learned from it, it feels authentic yes and it builds trust right people can meet you there yeah and my argument for that that story that narrative is there and i'm not suggesting you start making things up right <laughs> i'm not suggesting you start recrafting it in a way that's not true or isn't an accurate reflection i'm saying that story is there you just haven't pulled it forward you haven't been very proactive about it maybe you haven't given yourself permission to say it in a way that doesn't sound defensive mm -hmm. or defeated mm -hmm. because it's there and every business I've ever worked for the story is there they don't believe it until I rewrite it then they look at it and go okay maybe that's maybe that is what's actually happening that is what's actually happening but they never thought of it that way they've been putting out fires for so long They've been in crisis mode for so long, they haven't even given themselves permission to think they could rewrite what's actually happening, and they can. Um, and the example we have, the reason reinvention exists is because of COVID. So what's your connection to that whole point and what you saw happening in COVID? You went through COVID as a business owner. Oh yeah. So what's what was your experience there in regards to where your business what wall you hit because of COVID and how you started kind of rethinking? Oh man. Um, well, I mean, COVID, it was completely unknown, mm -hmm. right? So there was a lot of fear on what was going to happen, what would change in your customers, how their perspective was changing, how financial spending might be changing and then on top of it like we were completely shut down we were closed right with you know a store full of seasonal product and bills still to pay and it was just it was such a scary unknown yeah right so but what that did also is and well we got to go through reinvention with it too but i would say if covid was the moment that our back was against the wall it gave us that time and an opportunity well it, Obviously, what we were doing isn't possible right now. <laughs> we, right, right. we can't operate the way that we did. So what can we do that we can still engage our customers, that we can still have people coming in the door? What are people willing to spend their money on right now? Yep. And, you know, what, what do they want? Like, what do they want to spend their money on right now? Yeah. So it gave us the opportunity. We, we got creative with our online sales. We started offering a different product selection and mix. Um, we met customers where they were, you know, instead of coming into our store and shopping, we now were building like customer quotes of clothing, like mm -hmm. tell us what you're looking for. We'll have it all ready, keep what you want, leave the other stuff, you know, and we'll pick yeah. it up at the door. Um, trying to operate our business just in, in new and different ways that we wouldn't have done pre-COVID. Right. Didn't even know you were capable of it. Right. I think that COVID, um, forced everyone to press pause and we had the time the gift of COVID is that it gave us a little uh, time where there was nothing we could be doing other than step back and go well as long as I'm got a little time let's reevaluate this business while sweating bullets while, yeah yeah I mean <laughs> can't minimize the fear and uncertainty pressure and time and the grief of all that happened but mm -hmm. 
Um, what COVID also did is it it gave us all a narrative that we could build into. And that narrative was everything's going to change now. Everything has changed. We've wiped the slate clean on how the world works. Um, who do you want to be coming out of this? Yeah. And you could come out of it in a completely different manner, and no one would question why. No one would suggest that it was a failure or you did something wrong because everybody's in the same boat. So it was like a get out of jail free card. Kind Super of. unique opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was starting at the exact same spot. Right. Could anyone see that? Probably not. Right. But there was there was moments when that became a tool in our reinventions. We're like, you know, like we're all in this. Um, and we did actually hear probably more times than we ever expected is, you know, what really happened is COVID gave me a chance to think about this or that or really work on my business, whatever model or I mean, how many times have we heard that? Many times. Yeah. Yeah. Like, OK, looking back, COVID actually yes. did this for us and we got to look at this differently or do this differently or we got to change up how we were operating and we realized we didn't need to operate that way anymore. We right. could go forward like this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you you played into it. And, you know, my example is I had a I was passionate about a business I'd wanted to start my whole career. I started it and COVID forced me to shut it down. End of story, period. That was hard. But I would argue we're in a place that I could have never dreamed we'd ever be in and would never have been in without COVID. Doesn't mean we were on a path of destruction before, but it's a bigger dream than I would have ever dreamed to be here. So I think it's just a mindset. We're just suggesting that crisis and these backs against the wall moments are when creativity matters. And that's what we had to bring to that problem. And if, if you've ever um, heard that whole story, if you go to workup.cc, I kind of left the legacy of that story um, about the narrative that I rewrote about what just happened to Workup. I rewrote it on that page in a way that acknowledges the struggles, admits the, the defeat, and but also sets up how are we thinking about what could come next out of this? Where's the, where's the light? the possibility. So you have that opportunity to, it's, it's difficult, but your narrative is one of the most important things that you need to take control of right now. Like, I can't say that strongly enough. So clarify just so how you're going to tell your story and how the world is going to hear it. Yeah. And I'm not even suggesting you don't have to promise future things right now. I'm suggesting right. by looking back at what's not working, all of these three points and making those lists, but but then building into that list, what did I learn from that? There you go. Right. What did I learn? And I think if you think of yourself as a consumer, uh, you're always sort of impressed or inspired by people who have learned something in a hard moment and did something about it or differently. And then you know, you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, isn't that cool? It's so cool. And I think that's, again, like that's where that authenticity comes in and how, how you're telling your story, like recognizing that these truths, this is hard. These truths are happening. This is what I've learned from it. We're going to, we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to, we're going to learn from this. We're going to, people want to be a part yes. of the process and the change that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that excites us. So recognizing that maybe a change is going to happen because now I've learned this. Yes. People can they get that mm -hmm. like I can I can relate to that. Yeah. And it also acknowledges they see themselves in your acknowledgement of the problems you're facing. Right. And they say, OK, she does understand why I don't trust her. And I appreciate that because we're never going to get this solved if we can't all admit that that's actually what's happening. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so, OK, so we've got we've drawn the landscape. We've tried to rewrite our narrative about what we've learned and where where we're standing right now in terms of what we've learned and then what i would suggest ne next is how i basically live my life but it's intentionally put yourself out on a creative quest it sounds dramatic but i believe this um i think if you're an entrepreneur you can get pretty passionate and fired up when you connect to the right thing the right story the right example the right and this is the time to do that. This is the time 
that. Okay, okay. What what are these things that I'm attracted to in my world that I get super excited about that feel random or feel I've never considered that that was an important thing? What what's what are those sparks and let's let's pull them all in right now and see if there's any connection between what needs to happen right now and let's figure that out. Um, I call it the backpack theory. I, I didn't come up with that. It's a um, Sarah Kay uh, reference. She's a poet who says she brings um, every, uh, I can't remember how she words it, but it's brilliant. I'm not a poet. But um, the idea is that as human beings, as passionate human beings, we are really out in the world seeing and being inspired by things in our lives books, podcasts, music, sunsets, whatever. And if you can be intentional and kind of recognize those moments when they happen and throw them in the backpack, I call it a backpack because it's like I throw it in there and I carry it around with me forever. Um, and because you need all that stuff, that's like, that's like uh, you're, you're, you're making a recipe and those are the ingredients, but you need to collect the ingredients. And so it could be like for me, one of I'm a TED junkie. Like I'm a complete TED talk junkie. Um, so I I went to TED. Like I never dreamed I would go to TED, but I decided. You know what? Like who who if not me should go to TED because nobody's more nuts about it than me. Mm -hmm. So why not me? And it that was a connecting dots moment. So the first thing is to think about what's already happening in your life and what's inspiring you and where are you grabbing inspiration and throw it in that backpack because it matters. That's what I'm, I think my biggest suggestion is that matters. You matter. How you're wired matters in this particular moment more than anything. What makes you you and excited about things what stri what sparks your passion and i don't care if it has nothing to do with the business you're running that's where you need to be right now that's kind of the key part it is the key part mm -hmm. it is the key part there's this one talk that amanda palmer has that i've watched before that's not a ted talk but it's a talk she's giving and i've listened to it so many times and every time i listen to it this is so terrible. I cry at the end. Like I cry. And it's not a it's not a crying kind of thing. And I I was like, why am I crying? Like, what is going on? I feel like there's like a chemical reaction happening in my brain. But hey, I am, so I'm gonna throw that in the backpack. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna need that someday. That's gonna become a tool. And so I'm suggesting as human beings, as creative people, which you all are, take a moment and be consider it a quest to go gather that stuff up because it matters and someday when and when we sit down in these next steps that all should get dumped out and put on a table so we're looking at all of it mm -hmm. that's how it, it feels to me so that's one layer of it and i think the other layer of it is what we very intentionally try to help with and that is to actually go out and seek out stories of other businesses that could be your in your industry, completely outside of your industry, and listen to their stories. Find yourself in those stories. Find the problems you're facing in those stories. And not to say, okay, I listened to a podcast and now I know what I have to do. That's not gonna happen. But it's gonna, it's gonna alter the chemistry that's happening around this problem in your brain. Well, and it's, yeah, I think that those stories, they're inspiring. Mm -hmm. Cause Oftentimes, well, you can see yourself in that story, mm -hmm. or it will motivate you mm -hmm. to keep going forward. You know, it's it's inspiring. It's the moment where, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. Yeah. I thought no one else had ever felt like this. I thought no one else had ever been this close to the to bankruptcy. I mean, really, <laughs> yeah. the stories that we send people as part of our reinvention, some of those stories, they are they're moments from you know, the collections agency. And I don't mean to say it's all about money, but that's where a lot of people feel the most shame, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then, but, well, you wrote down this too, but like how I built this mm -hmm. is a great example. It's stories of 
entrepreneurs and businesses and how they started and the journeys that they've been on. And like we were saying, they almost all have, you know, that pit where they mm -hmm. were backed against the wall. And that was their time where they had to get creative and they had to try something. Mm -hmm. They had to pivot. They had to be different or, you know, was, they kind of they have a drastic moment. Mm hmm. I remember at the store, I remember when I would feel like frustrated or I didn't know what I was going, I'd always listen to how I built this. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay, if Burt's Beast can do it, <laughs> we can keep doing it too. Yeah. You know, it just kind of was like a, I don't know, it helps hearing other people's stories. It does. Mm -hmm. And those stories don't fall in front of you. You have to go out and get them. Yeah. That's you know? a good point. It's kind of like, what's what diet are you on for your brain? And you better start being pretty intentional about what you're putting in there because you need a healthy diet right now of what's going in your brain. There you go. Stop scrolling Facebook. Stop reading CNN right now. Get out there and go find the incredibly inspiring stories that are out there everywhere. But you got to go get them and find them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways to do that. There's books. There's podcasts. There's, sure. there's events to go to. There's... There's all kinds of things, um, but it's on you to do this part. And But I think if you can think of it as such a purposeful thing to do, like I'm not just wasting time. I'm not just out listening to fun podcasts. I'm on a journey here, and this is an important part of the journey that I need to do well and do thoroughly. Okay, that's a good point because sometimes when we do those things, it does feel like, well, I don't have time for that, or I'm not going to. Such a good point. Yeah. Yeah, let's just acknowledge for a moment that everything we've said sounds like a lot of work and these people are not sleeping. Right, right. they're busy, <laughs> they're in it, they're trying to keep a business open. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. I, I don't ever want to minimize the struggle. It is just to get through the day for these businesses. I would also suggest that sometimes that's a narrative you've told yourself. Right. And you've tried to prove it to yourself by being gone for a day and everything went to hell. Something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's a That's a narrative as well. Right, but if you're at this point where you feel like you're backed up against the wall and you don't know what you're gonna do next, well, what are you gonna do next? Like, gonna... This is an opportunity, this is the time, this is the time to do this. Yes. Because what else? What else are you gonna do? Or what? Yeah. You're gonna go back to the office the next day and just grind it out and keep grinding and, and grinding yeah. and grinding until you can't anymore like this is that's and that's why you said too like creativity is a lifeline in these moments yeah you just have to but you have to seek it out it doesn't just mm -hmm. happen to people they there's this misunderstanding that some people are creative and some aren't and i don't i don't believe that i don't believe that at all because we're all creative especially you know entrepreneurs there's no more creative group of people out there um it's all a matter of how much we've invested in that part of ourselves. How much have we given ourselves? How much information have we given ourselves? Because really what creativity is, it's not, it's, it's problem solving. And that's another way to define it, but that sounds boring. It's just connecting dots. It's just saying this over here does not seem related to this over here, but it is. There's a connection there and I want to explore what that connection is and figure out why What's the possibility there? And let's mm -hmm. try to connect those two things and what would happen if we did. That's just, that's all it is. It's so simple. Hmm. But the things you're connecting, you got to have a lot of them in your backpack and you got to <laughs> go out and get the rest intentionally. Right. So it's a very, um, that's, and yeah, this is where it gets fun, right? This is where it gets fun. Well, this is where people start feeling inspired again. Yeah. Like this is where you kind of, when you, when you start, looking at those dots and how you're going to connect them well now you're changing that brain activity from feeling stuck to feeling open yeah i'm back in it i'm back my in it brain's this back is, in it yeah and this is where we hear people going oh my gosh well, maybe i maybe maybe i guess yeah. I never thought of that you know those those comments are indicators that you're maybe going down the right path and i think what you, you and i feel a lot is we want you to feel supported in those moments. We're here for you then. Like that's yeah. what we're here to do is help you in that phase especially, right? Right. So in our in our uh, reinventions, we're challenging you and it feels very uncomfortable. But I think if we really were trying to be clear about what we're doing, it's this. We're trying to challenge you to allow yourself the time and opportunity 
to bring this stuff into the equation, invite it in and figure it out. And people just don't, they don't feel like they can do it and they don't feel like they can justify it because they're busy. Okay, and this is where it gets really fun. And this mm -hmm. is where we really try to rally around you and support you. And we do this in both of our programs. And that is to say, okay, you've, you've got all, you dumped it all out on the table. You figured out you're excited about a bunch of things here. You don't know what the relationship is between them. Now let's kind of look around and go, okay, well, what if I connected this to this? I'm gonna just try that on for size. So what if I had a restaurant that, you know, you gotta give Cole's example. You gotta. Oh, my husband's? Yeah. Yeah, so he's he's a really, my husband's a really good cook. And, but he sometimes will make interesting combinations and they usually turn out to be like, wow, this is awesome. Um, and he said, you know, if I had a restaurant, I would name it Krabby Coles and there'd be no substitutions, no changing anything. You're going to get what you get and you're going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, just a little example of owning who you, who you are, <laughs> totally building a business around it. But wow, wouldn't it be fun to try that on for size? Yeah. Like, let's, let's, okay. Let's walk further into that idea what would that actually look like what mm -hmm. could we what would the customers look like I mean give yourself permission to to just say you know what if I wipe the slate clean and I use this building for a completely different business there you go what if it wasn't a restaurant anymore what if it was a cooking school what if it was a you know what if I closed up and sold my building and went all online you just have to try on things for size and the part of that that people can't justify doing is taking the time to try it on for size to really go there yeah and you know and this is the part too where we just had this conversation with someone like it's your it's your business mm -hmm. make it something that you really like right it doesn't mean that you have to completely close it down and not do that thing anymore mm -hmm. but maybe it means bringing in a new something new to your business or pivoting the business but it's yours if you're gonna do it you know Make it something that you enjoy, that yeah. inspires you. And you know, if I'm, for all being honest, nobody really feels sorry. I'm, this sounds terrible, but take it for what it's worth. Nobody, a lot of people can't feel sorry for an entrepreneur who feels like a victim, who acts right. like a victim. And I wanna be sensitive when I say that because sometimes you are a victim of circumstances beyond your control. Absolutely. But if that's your narrative for everything you know because you're the captain of the ship like at some point people are going to say well it's your business so if you don't like it don't do it i mean ultimately it's hard and all of that but you're in charge like you can change everything if you want try something on for size and and there's a million reasons why people say well i can't i can't do that i'm i'm suggesting okay right now for this moment in time for this process we've got to let that go for right now i get it you're in a 30-year lease or you've whatever i get it you have a business partner but we have got to step out of that and allow ourselves this process to happen yeah allow ourselves to think you know to to, to get creative like you said to give yourself permission in this time mm -hmm. just to throw it out there mm -hmm. and what we just try to do in this part of it is not only fuel it, so we do some creative work, we um, push people to try on ideas in our programs, things like that, but we also try to be the right people to talk about that with because it's really easy to have the wrong people. <laughs> this is where everything can tank. When you give and you got yourself here and like, okay, I've got all, okay, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it on. And you go to the bar with your best friend and you you throw it on the table and they're like, well, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, or that will never work, or that's I don't get it. And then you just killed your you just killed your whole like energy. So how do you find the right people? Who's the right person? The right person is somebody who gets what it feels like to be in this place right. and probably has some bravery in their lives and maybe has a cup is half full not half empty right personality right we even said too like if you're if you're really trying this on for size and you want to ask maybe you want to ask your mm -hmm. your best customers about it make sure you're asking your your people yeah not just the person who's there the most spends the most but it's the person that gets 
what you're doing and what you're trying to do and where you might be going. Such a good point that, so we talk about focus on your best customers, but we also spend quite a bit of time. What do we mean by best customers? Right. And so many times the best customer is the one that spends the most. At least that's how you start out defining it. And we're suggesting that is not an indication of your best customer. Right. Your best customer is the one that's, they're in your tribe. They get you. They've bought into your story. They want to go where you're going. Yes. They may not be spending as much money as someone else, but they're in it with you. Right. They get you. And we, everyone has those people. Absolutely. Some have more than others, but those are the people you want to spend your time with. So um, you've got to elevate the priority they have in your decision making. That was a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so in order to, what does trying it on for size mean? In my way of thinking about it, this is where marketing kicks in a little bit. Okay. So I am going to open a movie theater, whatever. I'm going to do this thing. Okay. Practice writing the narrative of what that would sound like if you were actually going to do it. Try it on for size and tie it. Go back to the narrative we talked about earlier where you you got to this place you're at right now and you've learned so much. Mm-hmm. Now you, you know, you're humbly and vulnerably admitting, I've learned all these things. And then take it from there and what's the new narrative? What comes out of that that starts to determine what's next and really realign your business and intentions with the people that you care about, with a life that you wanted, the one you wanted when you started the business, um, not just the one you ended up with, and how do you tell that story in a way that people are like, yes, I get it. Like, I, I want to be part of it. Okay, and that is like, that was everything, right? So telling your story of, it's not a story of defeat. Right. It's not a story of angst. It's not a story of nobody gets it. It's a story of, hey, we did this. This is where we are now. This is what we learned. This is where I'm going to go. It's going to be pretty great. Join us. Yeah. There's no guarantees. Right. But let's do this together. And that's what we try to um, target in the end of our programming is trying on that narrative for size. Try try to rewrite the story here and see. Get up in front of a group of people and and tell the story and see how, how does that feel. And when you get the re- reaction you get, how does it feel to get the feedback on that narrative that you're getting from people who really are invested in your thought and in your experience that's where it can change the game so you gotta you gotta ask the right people um and this is where i want to be clear about the marketing part of this equation so there's a lot of narratives that we have in our lives that guide us that give us the framework we need and this is a particular narrative that's meant to build a business around it's not the narrative about your family life it's not the narrative about how you grew up. That's maybe part of it. But I'm suggesting this is where marketing kicks in. If you can get this narrative right and it can be authentic and build in the creativity that we all know you have, your customers are going to want to be part of the story. So the narrative we're suggesting you're talking about right now is the narrative where you're, that you're telling your customers. And that's the litmus test, right? If, they, if I can build a narrative that they can get excited about, then... I don't know how hard it's going to be. Like, I don't know how it's going to, but if we're in it together, you know, let's do this. We can do it. Right. And people want, like you said, people want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. That's new. That piques curiosity. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's something that you follow. Mm -hmm. That's something that you're like, okay, well, Mm -hmm. let's, let's get behind that. Let's follow this. Let's watch what's going to happen. Let's be a part of this journey. I want to be a part of that story. Yeah. Yeah. So people get excited. Yeah. But there's other narratives. I'm saying, you know, there's probably a narrative that has much more struggle in it that For you're sure, living yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, but this is a version that's meant to support the business. The version behind the scenes should also have a cuff, half full mentality. I've learned a lot, but um, also help you be vulnerable and real about, you know, what's how you're actually doing. Okay. So creating a new narrative. Oh my gosh. I know. Okay. Yes, yeah, six minutes to wrap it up. Listen, this is a good part. Listen, I hope right now in this, you're starting to feel what 
kind of positive energy can be generated in this part of the process. This is when it gets fun. This is when we're saying, hey, get back to being you right now. Get back to being the dreamer you were when you started the business in the first place. Right. Get back to connecting the dots of your life and how they help make a create a business that you want to live in for the rest of your life, that you want to be a part of with people you care about. That's your opportunity. And if you're not doing that for yourself, that's on you. I mean, we're, we're controlling our businesses. So we have that opportunity. Your back's against the wall now. You have no choice. So you might as well do this. Right. You might give, as well think this way. Yeah, give yourself permission to, to give yourself permission to try something, to get creative, to think differently. Yep. And once you have done that in such a way that you start to see possibilities, you start to gain some confidence that yes, maybe this is the way to go, then we pass the baton back to you and say, "Okay, do what you do best. You're an entrepreneur. Go figure out how the hell you're going to do it." But I promise you, by the time you get to that place, you don't need us anymore. Yeah. You're just going to do it. You're just going to do it because mm -hmm. you did it the first time and it wasn't easy and it was, there's no easy business to open. Right. Um, but you did it. And um, hopefully by the time you get to that place, you feel like you have a narrative that allows other people to get on board and say, yes, okay, I'm in this with you. Mm -hmm. I want you to open that brewery. Yeah. I'm excited for you. I'm excited yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when it can start to feel like, okay, I've reclaimed my life. And it's, um, I did it by changing my business. So, because entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs, right? A lot of people, that's just how they're, they're never going to, like I say, I'm not employable. I could never get hired. I'm not employable because I don't, <laughs> I can't, I can't, for all the kinds of reasons, I, I can't l survive in an employee environment. So, and a lot of our entrepreneurs are like, it's sort of in my blood here. Yeah, right. So we're saying, okay, let's embrace it. That means you're not going to go get a corporate job. You're going to reinvent your business. You're going to reinvent your business. And by the way, if you need to get a corporate job or waitress, which was always my backup plan, yes, to get through this part, please do. And don't feel judgment by right. anybody. Right, right. Entrepreneurs are scrappy. Yeah. They got grit. They got grit. Like, they just do whatever has to be done. And it. That is all on the table. Absolutely. Hopefully, you're not setting yourself to have to do that for the rest of your life. But if you got to do it, just do it. Yeah. It's reality. But keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Keep the possibilities. Keep the creativity coming. This is why I'm so passionate about the why process that we go through. Because I want everyone who owns a business to understand that who you are and what you believe matters. You're building a business around that. So figure, make sure you understand exactly what that is so you can articulate it. Because then when you're in these moments, you have something to, to re-anchor your thinking around. Yeah. And you're not going to change what you, you're not going to change what you believe to start a new business. You're just going to figure out how to live your beliefs better mm -hmm. and more effectively. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm preaching or something, but... I just, this, I believe this so passionately. So we're going to talk about some of this at our Love Your Work Retreat. Yes, our Love Your Work Retreat mm -hmm. coming up for our alumni community. Mm -hmm. October 1st and October 2nd, save the date. Save the date. We're excited. Of course, we, you know, we got our feet wet last year and it was, I think it was very successful, but we're certainly not going to rest on that success. We're going right. to, you know, take it up a notch and we're going to do different things and try stuff and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully... <laughs> You're on board with us, and you're going to go there with us. So please come enjoy and be part of that whole experience that we're building for you. Yeah. So. Well, if you feel like your back's against the wall, we hope that this can help you allow yourself, give yourself permission to do the things. This is hard work, you guys. But when you're in that place, it, everything's hard work. There's no direction you can turn that is not hard work. Right. Um. So embracing the hard work, but just making sure that it's getting you to the right place is what we're hoping to help you do, contribute to. So it's been fun. All right. Thanks, Thanks you guys. Yep. See you again in a month.